Disruption. Greatness awaits. Greatness awaits the disruption because there is greatness that awaits. I'm going to give you the text to talk and the takeaway, and we're going to speak to that just before we begin to uh, just share with you all that God has given me. I just want to greet a couple of people this morning and get right into this morning's manner. Welcome, Anitra. How are you all doing on this morning? Glad to be with you on this morning. Excellent morning it is. It's time for morning manner. The manna fam is ready. The manna fam is ready to receive a word. Verena, how are you all doing? If you're ready to receive a word, place it in the chat area. Put that in the chat area. And I want to remind you, want to remind you that uh, we're in a 21-day uh, fast. We're in a 21-day fast. And I just simply want to say to you, you can be a part of the fast as well. If you want to be a part of the 21-day disrupt the flow so you can get mo of what God has for you. If you want uh, to be a part of that fast, uh, and it is fasting mainly from things that you need to be disrupted in. Uh, for me, it's going to be sweets. It's going to be uh, one meal a day uh, this week, sweets for 21 days. But nevertheless, it's all kinds of ways that we're doing it. Put your email, put your email in the chat area. Whether you're watching this on Facebook Live or you're watching this on YouTube, put your email in the chat area and we will send to you the whole layout of the fast for 21 days. This is day three, day three. So we want you to connect, put your email in the chat area if you want to receive it. Free of charge, free of charge. We want to just add value to you. We want to add value to you. This morning is Disrupt the Flow Part 3. Greatness awaits. Greatness awaits. The text, the talk, the takeaway. Here's the text. Jonah 1 and 1 and 2. Jonah 1 and 1 and 2. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Arise, go to Nineveh. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Arise, now go to Nineveh. Now, you already know this story. You already know what happens. But let me give you some talk about the text that will help you even more. The first thing I need you to understand with respect to when God disrupts, because he's disrupting Jonah, and he's disrupting Jonah for a reason. The first thing is that you're going in the wrong direction. Jonah, your destiny is this way, not that way. Could it be the same thing for you right now? You think your destiny is in one direction. God is saying it's in a whole nother direction. And if I don't disrupt you, you're going to end up going in the wrong direction. That's what Jonah was doing. If you look further in the first chapter, he says he went down to Joppa. And from down to Joppa, he went down in the sea. And then when he was found in the belly of the well, he, or big fish, however you want to interpret the scripture, then the well went down in the sea. It was going in the wrong direction. God says, I got to change, I got to change your direction. So the second thing is when greatness awaits, God disrupts you because you are giving your desires the wrong priorities. Your desires have begun to trump God's desires. What do we know this about Jonah? Jonah says, I don't want to be bothered with them sinful people, though they were even cousins of his. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to go. That's not my priority. God, that's your priority. You want them to hear the gospel. I'm not interested in them hearing the gospel. I have other priorities. So what? When your priorities trump God's priorities, God has to disrupt you. He has to disrupt you. So perhaps right now, when you look at your situation, could it be that you have been disrupted by God because you have placed above his priorities your own? The third thing is this. You, 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 got, you got others looking at you. When God disrupts you, could it be that you are a witness and you need to be reminded of that? The 10th verse tells you in the, in the first chapter of Jonah, the men on the boat 
said somebody's God is mad with them. And when Jonah fesses up and before they throw him off, off the uh, side of the boat, then they, they ask this is your, what have you done? What have you done? You put all of us in jeopardy because you are not following your God. God had to disrupt you and about to kill us. Off to the side there, Jonah. We didn't have no more time for you. Could it be that you fail to understand that you are a witness in the community? You are a witness on your job. You are a witness in your home, but you have varied and weighed away from that, waited away from that to the point that God has to disrupt you to remind you, wait a minute, you are my image in the earth. You represent me. And so I need to disrupt the way you're doing things. What's your takeaway this morning? 120,000 people, the largest revival before Pentecost took place because Jonah, the great preacher that he is, finally did what God wanted him to do. Greatness was awaiting him. Greatness was awaiting him. And he preached, and the scripture says over 120,000 people, God say, came to God, repented. Greatness awaits. Greatness awaits. But you have to understand that God is going to disrupt you to get you to the greatness that he has for you. Come here, Jonah. Have a seat, son, and realize you are great, but you got to be great at what I'm telling you to do, not great at what you want to do. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. I'll see you tomorrow morning with more morning manna where I'm continuing to talk about this whole disruption. Disrupt the flow so you can get more. Lord be with you. Share this manner. Don't keep it to yourself. Bye now.